uh, this is part two. Let's begin with this uh, grandfather clock. And uh, this particular one, uh, we'll have to take the movement out because we can't take the front uh, trim board out of the uh, clock. So we'll begin with uh, the simple procedure of removing the movement, oil in it, and putting that movement back in for you. So we'll start uh, here and uh, let's uh, get ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, pendulum and the pendulum weights. And uh, please bear in mind when you're doing your own clocks in your house there that these are top heavy. So they are easy to tip over if you're not watching what you're doing. So make sure your kids are clear of the clock and make sure that you... It's always nice if you have somebody help you hold the clock and while you're working on it. Uh, that's a kind of a uh, protection so you don't dump that clock over. Uh, we almost did one time in a in a customer's house. Well, I, it was uh, close. We caught it before it fell over, but it it can can happen. So first of all, go out and get yourself a pair of uh, cotton gloves or some any kind of gloves will work. You really don't want to touch the weights if you. Uh, have oily fingers and, uh, and you keep touching your weights, eventually that'll eat through that lacquer and then your weights will get all spotted and they won't look very pretty. So that also goes true with the uh, pendulum. You should never touch it without putting on a pair of gloves. And when you wind it, same, same goes. You should always have a little pair of gloves sitting in the bottom of your clock or on the top of your clock and uh, that'll, that'll sure help you keep your uh, chains and your clock uh, weights nice and clean. So we'll begin now. So we're going to go over there and the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the uh, pendulum and the weights. So we'll start with that. Now it's kind of nice, now it's kind of nice if you uh, have some old socks that you can uh, put your weights in. Make sure that uh, the weights here are, are uh, all about two thirds or three thirds, of, almost two thirds of the way up. I don't mean. So you don't want them clear up here where you can't get them unhooked. So the first thing we do is, well, first of all, let's get the pigeon out of the way. You just unhook it and let it lay over there in the corner. Now, you just put the sock on your weight and remove the weight. Now, some of these, if you're worried about your weights, just use a uh, marking pen, and uh, this one here is your left, so you can take on the bottom, make a left, and that'll tell you what that what, you know. So that way you don't mix your weights up. It's uh, pretty easy to figure out. It's always the right weight is usually the heaviest, and uh, the other two weights are generally the same. So, all right. We got one weight loaded up here, so we'll take the uh, right weight center off next. Like I said, the left and the center will be about the same weight. The right weight will always, generally, will will always be heavier. Okay, now the nut here to hold the hands. Just hold on to the hand and loosen it. Okay, you just unscrew your nut, your hand nut there, and now you've got your hands are ready to come loose. And you just grab them. Now the uh, our hand is just frictioned on there, so you just grab a hold of them right there and pull them off. So now that you got your hands off, you're free to uh, undo the screws and remove the movement from the back side. Okay, bear in mind that uh, some clocks, grandfather clocks, don't have a back that's removable. And that's this piece in here. Yeah. So some of them only come out through the side. And uh, on those you probably won't have to remove the uh, chime board to uh, get them out. It, you'll have to slide it around the chime board. 
Now on this particular one, you could easily take this clock out without removing the chime board. But I think uh, if you're doing this at home for the first time, you're better off to go ahead and remove the chime board and be careful that you don't drop it or break uh, the, the uh, chime bars. Uh, they're expensive. So you want to get your hand in here. Now I've removed two of the screws. This is where it'd really be nice for somebody to hold onto the clock in the front so you don't tip it over. It it is easy to do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the chime board. I'll turn it upside down and lay it against the wall. That way, uh, if you have kids, you don't. You might want to put it back in the clock. Uh, these these rods are really sharp, and you don't want a kid to fall on them. So that's one of the. Uh, important things here. Alright, now that we got the chime board out of the way, you can see it's going to be real easy to move the clock out of there. So, down here, I've got this adjusted for you. There are two uh, uh, screws that hold the, the clock in position underneath the uh, this wood board right here. There's a screw right here and one right here and it's got two flat uh, washers that hold it all in position. So the next thing we want to do is remove that. <laughs> now you can put on this particular clock I can reach it from the inside. And unscrew those. And that's generally all that holds those clocks in position. So, on this particular model, there's a plate here and a plate here. And that allows you to uh, put it back in exactly where it belongs. And uh, you can put a line across the bottom of these. So you know where it has to set before you take it out of there. I, I know where it belongs, so I don't have a problem with that. But for, for a beginner... You might want to make a little line across here with a pencil or something so you know about where to set that for depth in between. So now we can just go ahead and pull it out. Should have used my gloves by the way. You, you know, uh, the less you touch the plates, even the clock plates okay. and the chains. You're going to need a few tools. You need a pair of pliers. You're going to need uh, some special uh, cleaning tips and some uh, micro applicator tips. You're going to need some cleaner. And this is probably the best cleaner I have found that uh, doesn't have a lot of odor to it, doesn't, and it evaporates fast. You uh, cannot use this and spray the uh, pivots and stuff out of your clock. Please don't do that. This stuff does drip, you know, it'll, it'll build up on your plates and it'll leave a film. Uh, that's not a good idea. So you want to, uh, I, I've shot a still picture of this so we'll put it at the very end. But this is CRC and it's uh, electronic cleaner. You can get this at about any uh, parts, uh, automotive parts store. And I think it's about six or seven dollars for a can of this. Not sure where I buy it by the case. but uh, And I use it only when I'm on the field and I think that I can service the clock uh, in a field. Um, normally I bring the clocks in, the movements, and I service them in a cleaning tank. But uh, sometimes, you know, I'm 60 miles out. <laughs> uh, if I can clean it there, I will. And so I use the CRC cleaner. 
uh, it works pretty well and I'm going to show you how to use it in the uh, shop here and uh, normally like I said if I had the clock in the shop I'd put it in a cleaner but uh, today I want to demonstrate how you can clean your own clock at home so we'll got the uh, clock over here on the workbench Start, uh, I am using here. some uh, mechanic uh, pink uh, cloth towels and uh, you might uh, want to get an old uh, t-shirt or an old towel or uh, a newspaper will work to put your clock on it so you don't scratch your table or whatever you're working on a kitchen table or something and uh, one of the things that I'm sorry I spaced off uh, because it's you know this is so a snap to me and I never thought about it but when you uh, undo before you undo your uh, clock out of your your movement make sure that you uh, string a wire or a fishing line or something through all the chains and then twist them shut and that'll help keep these chains from falling off the sprockets uh, for me it's it's just sec second nature I know exactly which ones uh, I might have to actually take uh, the little clock or the uh, hook off to restring them and then put them back on uh, but uh, for for somebody that's never done this you know you get it all in there and find out that your chain fell off the, the track or something like that and it's very irritating so I never give that a thought but you might want to tie your chains up uh, it's not a big deal if they come off you can uh, restring them before you put it back in the clock and make sure everything's the, the, the hooks on the weight side not the wind up side so that's kind of a no no and uh, once you got those tied up the next thing you want to do is uh, I'm gonna back out here just a little bit next thing you want to do is remove this uh, leader and uh, the reason you do that is because you don't want that to uh, get caught and bust off your suspension spring up here this is your suspension spring and uh, you break one of those and generally they have one and they, they ship with these but sometimes they don't so this is kind of a oh it's about a fifteen dollar spring so anyway remove your leader and then you're about ready to start cleaning your clock so we're going to use uh, the CR spray now once again don't take this spray can and spray all these pivots out that, that don't don't get this stuff on your uh, don't get it on your plates this is not what you want to do you want to uh, now I, I send these in the clock kits and you just want to come in here and spray that you get that nice and wet all right and we'll start at the very bottom and the first thing you want to do is just Take the pointed part of your your uh, cleaner and go around that. And make sure you get loosen up the oil. You don't or the grease, and you just want to go around the edge. Now, what this does is it loosens up the grease, or the sludge that's in your pivots, and uh, the cleaner. I don't know if you can see it or not. The cleaner uh, fluid takes off the dirt. You can use a pointed. I I I make these pointed for you when you buy the clock kits, but uh, you can take a toothpick too, and that'll work. Anyway, that's the way you do it, and uh, just trying to dig out the grease doesn't do you any good. You got to get it out of there. So. The fluid on the uh, on your uh, Q-tip works beautiful, and uh, doesn't doesn't cause any problem with your clock. So, a couple three things. Let's go through. Number one, do not use uh, three in one oil. Do not use DR lubricants like the sprays. Uh, DRW40 don't use those don't use uh, sewing machine oil don't uh, 
don't use uh, use what you what we call clock oil and uh, the the clock oil that comes in my kits is called uh, red dragon clock oil and in my opinion it's the best out there you can't buy any better it has the right viscosity it's the right thickness it doesn't have any uh, reaction against the brass in other words some of these DW40s uh, uh, they'll uh, turn your, your plates green and they start eating into your uh, your brass and it, it just makes a, a terrible mess out of your clock uh, basically oils that look like uh, vegetable oils or uh, uh, like olive oils or oh, um, uh, uh, got a brain fart here Mazzola oils or if they look like that they're probably not the right oils so the the best oil that I have that uh, that I recommend is this stuff right here and uh, let's see if we can get a shot of that and that's that's what I use <laughs> So, comes with your clock kits. Comes with your clock kits. And you can see it's a little bit of a darker oil. This oil is a 100% synthetic oil. It is designed for clocks and uh, even outdoor clocks. And uh, the, the viscosity of this stuff is fantastic. Once it lubricates the shaft and it lays in the oil wells, your sinks, it doesn't leave and it stays put where it's supposed to. Some of these light grade oils that you see that are called clock oils, what I've, what I've experienced in the last 35 years is that they last for about six to a year and they, they capulate out of the, uh, the pivot well oil, uh, the well holes. And uh, here's a three in one, don't use that. <laughs> that's, that's, a, I don't, that's a terrible oil. For uh, it might work good for car hinges, but it doesn't work for about anything else. So uh, use the oil that I'm telling you. It's probably the best there is. And these kits don't cost that much, and it'll do every clock you have in your house. And uh, we're going to go through as many clocks as I can find that uh, we have time to do. So we're going to do a. I was only going to do a two two uh, video, a part A and a part B video, but I think I'm going to expand this on to three or four different grandfather clocks and uh, wall clocks and that way you have a really good education on how to oil your clock and do it right so we'll uh, we'll keep going here and I'm gonna show you how to clean these next as we go uh, let me get back out here a little bit so so the first stage we're going to do is we we want to clean the uh, clean the clock and we want to clean all the pivots now each each pivot owns itself to a gear so it's easy to figure out which ones are that need to be oiled and uh, I'm going to show you as we go here all these these main ones down here are these are your drive gears and that's where the chains are hooked onto and then they follow right on up to the top and uh, each one of those is a gear and there's a pivot and an oil well you can see the little dimple there each one of these has a little dimple in it and you can see the black dirt in this one here so we're going to get that out of there and uh, but like I said the only way to do that is to use a cleaner and uh, I provide these long uh, long uh, q-tipped cleaners these little wood ones because you can uh, take the back end and I, I grind it to a point and uh, these just work beautiful and I usually put in three or four of these to each kit so that you have a, a number of them these are kind of hard to find, by the way, so I order them by the thousand, <laughs> and and uh, so I, I've decided uh, that I, I didn't used to include these in the kits. I just told you to go get yourself some Q-tips, but they don't work very well because they're just just not long enough to, to do the right job. So I use these long ones with a wood tip on them, and uh, I don't know. I could probably sell these for a few half a buck or something, uh, you know, for ten of them or a package of ten. I'll think that out and put it on my website. So uh, I do have uh, plastic applicators too. Now that's if you over oil, you can use a, uh, an applicator and remove some of the oil, and then that way you don't, because uh, you don't want too much oil on these pivots. 
Okay, we are, <laughs> I love that word, okay. So we're at uh, about 18, 19 minutes on this video already. So the next uh, video will be part three, and that will be the actual cleaning the pivots and then coming back and doing the whaling. I think uh, I, I try to keep these at about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, 20 is just getting clear out of time. Uh, people just don't watch that much, and I, you really need to sit down and watch these uh, videos clear through. You're going to miss stuff, and then you're going to be frustrated when your clock don't work. And uh, I, I don't want that to happen. So if you get tired, uh, you know, put the, put the YouTube down, or go do something else, you know, horse around, take a walk, and then come back and, and play the rest of the video. Try to uh, try to run through these videos. Uh, everything that I do in these have a, a tremendous amount of information, and uh, I want you to uh, be able to clean your clock with expert uh, uh, excellence and uh, not have a problem with them. So we'll uh, end this video as part two, and part three will be the uh, cleaning and oiling of the clock. So thanks for watching. As always, I really appreciate it, and. Uh, Part three will be coming up very shortly.